GNT show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advice. Live long and prosper. friends with benefits <laughs> speaking of having a good time terry mm-hmm. dayton broke <laughs> the gnt show this is now the david mac <laughs> appreciation <laughs> hour yeah. <laughs> what is it about this guy that people love him so much with his purple velvet cape and his crown i thought it was a little much when he had us carry him in the studio on a throne i am awesome <laughs> <laughs> Look what I have brought upon the world! There is an urge to go nyan 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 nyan. I heard rumors that you might be working on something else, but we won't pry much. <laughs> I'm, say it. I'm gonna pry a little. <laughs> dare you! How dare you ask me to change it? Do you not understand the majesty of my genius? <laughs> and the guy sitting next to me looked at me like he was, you know, like I'd cramped in his hat. Yeah, it's the professionalism yeah. that sells the show, that's right. Kapla. This is uh, Mike, also known as Ceridium, and joining me today for another GNT show supplemental log uh, at Cryptic Studios is the lovely Adrian. And today we are sitting down to speak with Christine Thompson, also known as Kestrel. Thank you, Christine, for jo- taking your t- time Thank out you your busy day. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, we have, uh, well, for, first off, I, I want to say I love the new episode. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the episode after that, we are doing a team play thrust right now, so I'm like halfway through it. <laughs> right on, right on. But yeah, I you had me cheering in the beginning, and then I was cursing like a sailor at the end. I was like, no, no, no. Yeah, I was not expecting that. <laughs> and uh, But it, it totally worked. Um, but I, afterward, I had tweeted, and I believe Facebook, you know, what's the first rule of Fight Club? You don't talk about Fight Club. And here's a secret organization, and this big thing just happened, and it's like, there cannot be a song to be sung. <laughs> well, that was that was actually part of why he made the choice he made was to be a symbol for Klingons because he's always been a symbol for Klingons. Mm-hmm. That's why he was brought back. Yeah. Um, and I'm really avoiding using the name for anyone who hasn't played the episode yet. But spoilers, y'all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he's a symbol. He's always been a symbol. He knew that that battle could be a symbol for. Or Klingons. And in its way, it was a victory. It showed there could be a victory. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, you know, gives the inspiration to keep going. And yeah, songs come out of that. Yeah. So the the exact details of what happened and who else was there will probably never be known. But... <laughs> <laughs> and I do appreciate yeah. that uh, 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 it was a, about a week later that yeah. um, there actually was a song that was sung uh-huh. and, and, and released and I, I loved it. Which really, you know, like I said, set my mind at ease because, again, first rule of Fight Club. (laughs) Yeah, I've been writing those um, supplemental logs that are going up on the website, The Tales of the War. And I always am having to cross, because I'm writing them several weeks in advance because of, you know, schedules and translations and all of that. So I'm always having to, like, cross-reference on my schedule. Well, they have seen X before. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Right on, right on. Yeah. So really, um, you you have... you guys have been doing a wonderful job. Mm-hmm. Um, you are part of the story team. Yes. You, um, it, it's you. It's Steven, well, it's it's Sal. you know because we are a small team. Everybody wears multiple hats. Um, Al's the lead designer. Then there's Charles Gray, who's the lead content. Um, Steven, who is the executive producer. Um, but also all of our content designers are going to bring their own spin to this episode or to any episode. Like House Peg had um, uh, Matt Miller worked on it for a while um, before he left and um, Jadawa Ross worked on it and Charles worked on it and all of them brought their own, you know, things to it as well. The, one of the cool things about Cryptic is that story can be a really collaborative process. So. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not just one person stuck in a room. Anything of de- Anything of game development is a team sport so right on yeah. right on 
Um, mm-hmm. So you 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 uh, you actually uh, put to words <laughs> uh, together for the latest uh, well all of the yeah. the continent and, mm-hmm. and so and uh, we've already mentioned the the previous episode which was yes. fantastic um, but the 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 arc that the uh, Aconian War is taking so far mm-hmm. has been very interesting. Um, I, I love the, what you guys are doing releasing it you know a little bit at a time mm-hmm. giving us time to. Re- play and you know check it out and, and being able to uh, absorb it mm-hmm. and I've noticed in multiple playthroughs that uh, there are things that I've missed you know so that these are episodes with substance they're not just simple let's go shoot five things and <laughs> move on there's these are characters that are alive well, essentially yeah well I think our level of storytelling has increased so much over the development of the game I mean when we first developed the game we had 18 months of development time which was really about a year, which was okay. If you look up insanity in the dictionary, that's 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 there. what it was. <laughs> <laughs> but um, after that, you know, we re- the more we go, it's we look at what you guys want, what players want to see. You're not happy with shoot five things and go home. Um, we're not happy making shoot five things and go home. So it's a continual of how can we push this? How can we make it better? How can we add a different cutscene? Can we get a custom animation for this? You know, what if someone sings? Uh, you know, if it's appropriate. Uh, <laughs> All of this, and you know, just continually building up the storytelling techniques. And uh, the Iconian War, I mean, to some extent, has been in the back of our mind since the very, very first days of development. Uh, I remember the very first meeting that I was ever in on Trek, and I wasn't even a part of the team yet. I was still working in community and marketing, um, and the word Iconian was used. So we've been planning it all along. But when it got to the point to actually do it, we're like, okay, we can't just have this be like a two-parter and then done, because we've been building this mm-hmm. up for five years. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was going to say, it has yeah. a, um, absolutely a sense of depth to it. It has um, roots. It has yeah. a base. So uh, even if, if you can't remember how far back it's been involved, it feels like it's always been there and yeah. that you've been able to see the, the really important um, elements of that story come alive. So mm-hmm. they've all been spotlighted amazingly well. And it, it, it's ha- you get hints about what's, what was coming on bo- on all sides. Mm-hmm. Whether you're playing Fed or Klingon or, or Romulan, yeah, you get yeah. little... Every scene and has yeah. had a little bit of something. Yeah, and I will say, it. yeah, and I will say the end of this arc, the episode is just substantial enough. We, I don't know, I'm sorry if I'm supposed to be saying this, but I will. Um, we just we realized we could not have one designer work on it. It was just too big. It was just too much. Wow. So uh, it's having multiple designers, multiple artists. <laughs> you know, it it sounds <laughs> yeah. impressive. I'm not. I'm very excited yeah. now. Are there players that have interesting theories that have amused you or bothered you? There, there have been some really interesting theories. I've seen some really interesting theories about who the other is. Yeah. Um, I have not seen the correct one yet. Hmm. <laughs> Were there any that um, either sparked an idea, perhaps? There have or... always, there have definitely been ones that have sparked ideas. Yeah. I, occasionally. Um, I've looked at things like somebody had a thread it was on Reddit or somewhere about you know um, our links to the Iconians in of Bajor and I was going back and I, I wrote those books like three four years ago at this point and I was like hey, wait a minute yeah that works that does work and if we do this then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, I mean we're always paying attention to feedback um, Twitter Reddit podcasts um, sometimes I mean the forums we watch the forums sometimes the just the static to noise ratio ratio is a little hard sometimes to find the cool stuff mm-hmm. but you know we're always paying attention to what fans want and what you want to see and what you want to see more of what you want to see less of and trying right to on. make a game people want you know um yeah. you, you have been uh, in the Iconian war even from the very first episode mm-hmm. we've been getting a lot of fantastic voiceover mm-hmm. uh, in the first episode we had uh tom paris yep. robert uh, duncan uh, uh, robert duncan mcneil mcneil thank yes. you <laughs> and uh, writing for their characters, do you find it difficult to kind of sort of? Actually, those are the some of the easiest characters to do because you've already got the voice. I mean, you know, Tom Harris had a voice over seven seasons of Voyager. You just mm-hmm. have to get back into that voice. Um, morale was a little harder because she mostly is a character who's been used on our screen more than on the TV show. Yeah, she only appeared as an adult in one game. episode. Yeah. Um, but we did bring back Lisa Lo Cicero, who was the person who played morale in. In game, we brought her back, and she was also played morale in our game. Um, so it's just you know. 
know, they're fun because you can find the voice, and also the recording sessions are fun. And I try to let them. I, every every session we've done with one of the Trek actors, I've been, you know, you guys are the experts on the character. You know a lot more. Tell us if you want us to change lines. Um, and sometimes we have changed lines just from feedback from the actors. Um, uh, Michael Dorn had us change a few lines. Um, he actually gave me some really good insights on how Klingons talk, or at least how Worf talked, and which has changed how I write Klingons. Is there any uh, little bits of uh, tip that you remember? Yeah. Uh, drop the contractions. Oh, yeah. yes. I will yes. not, and still have, I won't. Yes. 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 Draw it out. <laughs> Draw it out a little bit. Um, uh, when we were recorded with um, Robert Picardo, uh, that actually was a his. It was a really fun session, but it was a difficult session. Um, he did not get to ad lib a lot on Voyager. Um, he took this as an opportunity to do so, um, and so he would do like you know 15, 20 takes for every line, and wow. some of them were absolutely hysterical. <laughs> but we were just trying to. At that point, it was like, all right, we've got all this stuff. What are we actually going to use? <laughs> <laughs> Is there any plan to release or share, maybe perhaps at the Vegas convention, a clip of his? Uh, you know, I should, I, should yeah. try, I should talk to our audio team. We could probably do a whole supercut of I'm a doctor. Or, not, I'm a doctor, not a blank. Oh, yeah, I mean, that would be a total fun for mm-hmm. something to, nice to do at Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. I, I worked with him on uh, Renegades, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so finally getting a chance to, to meet him. Very cool guy. Yeah. I've never actually met him in person. It's just over, you know, and most of these people I only know over Skype, so. <laughs> right on. <But. laughs> um, th- th- there was an ou- announcement not too long ago that we're getting Nog soon. We are. We are getting Aaron Eisenberg. In fact, that was the uh, mission I had up on my screen when I came in here to do this interview was uh, Nog's first episode, so. <laughs> right on. Um, he was a lot of fun to work with. Um, I hope we bring him back, so. Oh. Yeah. Out of the the voice actor or the actors that you've worked with so far, um, are there any any others that you would like to, to bring back? And... You know, there are very most of them. I think would be great to work with again. Mm-hmm. There's some I don't know if they would be interested in working with. You know, just things are different. You know, in their lives, and there some of them are super crazy busy. I would love to work with Jerry Ryan again. Mm-hmm. It would be a matter of finding a spot in her schedule and us having the right plot line. There there is like a plot line that we have been kicking around in. Terms Internally for like three years at this point that would not work unless we bring Jerry Ryan back. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I would love to work with Ethan Phillips again. He was wonderful. Um, I will work with Kim Rhodes, who was Jet Laya in mm-hmm. Dust to Dust. I will work with her anytime. And in fact, I will make another character for her if she <laughs> wants because she was amazing. Um, there is somebody who has worked with us previously we are talking about bringing back, but I can't do anything else oh, other than that. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Um, I have, Denise I, has been amazing. Yeah, she, she's... Denise has been a big supporter of the game. She she was one of the first people who agreed to sign on with us, and she kind of took a chance on us when some of the other Trek actors weren't, wouldn't, and she opened the door for us to have everybody else that we've, ed- we've had in the game. That is awesome. Yeah. Well, up to and, that point, was it, uh, it was just that Zachary Quinto's voice and Leonard, Leonard Nimoy. Nimoy. Leonard, yeah, well, and we had the we had uh, Zachary Quinto and Leonard Nimoy, mm-hmm. which were both negotiated pre-launch. <coughs> and Zachary Quinto was almost a surprise to me because mm-hmm. Atari marketing made that deal, and I was like, "Oh, you've got Zachary Quinto. He can't play Spock. Figure out something for him to do." Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And for the, um, uh, yeah. just for for everyone yeah. following along at home, he mm-hmm. is a hologram. Yes. A holographic doctor in the tutorial. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and then we had uh, Chase Masterson um, as Lita. Hollow Lita. Yeah. Um, and that guy, that was a deal that kind of, you know, one of the people who worked here at the time met her at a convention and talked to her and we, we kind of went from there and worked it out. But after that, Denise was the one who really was willing to take a chance on us. Yeah. yeah. Who would you like to get next? Oh, God, I have a whole list of people I want to get next. I would love to get Colin Meany. Mm, I would no love Brian. to get, um, you know, I would love to get the rest of the Voyager crew. Um, we still haven't seen Bellana and <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know? I, oh, that that mm, yeah. I was I was saying okay. Here's the family reunion. We got yeah. we got 
the elder Paris. We got younger Paris. Yeah. Where's Mama Paris? Yes. I, I, <laughs> I, I pushed pretty hard for Jordy at one point, but ah. that ended up not working. Um, I pushed really, really hard for Jeffrey Combs at one yes. point. Yes. That did it's not work. <laughs> he could be anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can have a lot of fun with him. Yeah. yeah. In any role. Mm-hmm. Right on. Right on. Yeah. Um, and, and if we ever got Patrick Stewart, we'll just let him do whatever he wants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he can wear a lobster suit yeah. <laughs> in a bathtub. Yeah. We'll just make it Patrick Stewart online. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right on. Um, but yeah, you you've done some some amazing work um, with with both in the game and then with the 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 supplemental stories that you've mm-hmm. done. And you've also written for Star Trek magazine. Right. Correct? We do have a regular thing going in Star Trek magazine. I'm not the only person that's written for Star Trek. I've done several stories, but mm-hmm. Jesse Heinig's done a story. Kate Bankson's done a story. Jado has done a story. Um, it, the partnership with Star Trek magazine has worked out very well with us. They have been, you know, gracious enough to give us space in every issue for a couple of years now. Um, where we can tell Star Trek Online stories and help bring that and bring the game to an audience that may not necessarily know what's out there. Um, it was really kind of interesting. We went to the Star Trek convention in uh, San Francisco late last year, and that's our people. That's our tribe. You know, that's a Star Trek convention. Mm-hmm. And the number of people who were like, yeah, I didn't know this was a thing. You know, we're like, okay, we got to figure it out. We're out there. You know, we're out here. Come find us. <laughs> right on. Um, well, well, we know that, that you are a Star Trek fan, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so re- refresh our memories. What is your favorite series? My favorite series, well, that's hard to say. Deep Space Nine is my favorite, are my favorite stories. Okay. But TNG was my first series, and everybody has a mm. special spot in their heart for their first series. It's like their first Doctor. Yes. Um, so TNG and DS9 are very, very close. Right on. Yeah. But there's, I'm, you know, I find Voyager to be the most consistent, and some of its Borg stuff, especially in the later seasons, was great. Um, Enterprise did some interesting things, particularly in season three and four. Um, I would have liked to have seen them push the, we're out in space on our own and forging new things a little harder than they did, uh, particularly in the first two seasons. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, TOS is TOS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, not not including um, Star Trek. Uh, do you have any any favorite uh, sci-fi um, series? or Babylon 5, Farscape. I do like Star Wars. I know there's this whole supposed to be this dichotomy that you're not allowed to like. It's them. all but fandom. It's all it's convention. It's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, us because we're all Star Wars and Star Trek fans. Yeah, here, yeah. So. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an all-purpose nerd. I mean, I, I yeah. there's a lot of comic books I like. There's other video games I like. Um, you know, I watch Arrow. I watch The Flash. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, we all, we know also know that you, you read a lot of the Star Trek books. Yeah. Who's your favorite author? Um, I really like uh, Keith D. Candido. I think I'm saying that. Candido. Can, yeah, I yeah. said it wrong. I'm sorry, Keith. I've never actually met you. <laughs> um, um, I like Dayton Ward stuff. I um, I like um, the Rahansu novels by Diane Duane are some of my favorites. Mm-hmm. So I try to keep up with them. Um, I'm not linked in with Pocket or anything like that, um, other than the one novel we did very, very, very early in the development with Mike Martin. Um, but so I, I buy my novels on Amazon or wherever, just like everybody else. Else when they come mm-hmm. out, so right on, right <laughs> yeah. on. I'm currently reading. Um, I can't think of the title, but it's the one uh, right after the DS9 gets blown to bits. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I've read that one. Yeah. Spoiler, if you didn't know. <laughs> you know, when I read that, I was like, man, I never had the guts to do that. They'd have massacred me on the forums if I'd have blown up Deep Space Nine. <laughs> that definitely took some guts to pull off. It was another dimension, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... Uh, yeah, currently I'm reading a George Orwell novel, actually, Down and Out in Paris and London, but I think oh. Armageddon's Arrow is next up on my Kindle. So, you know, I always have way too many books on my Kindle, so it's just what comes up. Nice. Right on. <laughs> uh, that one I, I still have yet to pick up, but it's uh, Dayton Ward's new novel, and oh, yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Yep. Yeah. Um, we've already asked you a, a lot of a lot of uh, the questions, uh, the Lipton questions.
question, so I, I won't bore you with them. Um, but um, there, there, there is one that I that I'm going to ask. If you if you could, can kill a major character, who, I've been asked that before. Yes, we I have. Think by I'm, you. Just, I'm just wondering <laughs> if it, yes, we have asked it before. Yes. But I'm, I'm wondering, has your answer changed? My answer, <laughs> my answer has changed because I actually came up with a plot line that I needed her for the other day. <laughs> so if I ever use that plot line, I need her. But um, so if, you know, I would love to. I don't want to kill him, but Deep Space Nine every season had the make O'Brien completely miserable. Yes. Make uh-huh. O'Brien suffer episode, mm-hmm. and he did them so well. He did. <laughs> He's such a trooper. Yeah. <laughs> if I ever could bring him back for an, and it would have to be. I couldn't just you know bring him back for one episode and then make him suffer right. for like four. Well, you five, could. I could. <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but if we were bringing him back for sure. several yeah. episodes, it, O'Brien would suffer. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> um, well, is there anything else you'd like our listeners to know? Maybe some hints you can drop about what's coming? Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to drop hints about what's coming. Um, Just give you heads, a heads up. This, yeah. These these should be released sometime midweek next week. Okay. So keep that in mind. Yep. So, yeah, Time in a Bottle uh, is the next episode. That's the one I've been talking about for playing. It's, it's really fun. It's got some great little Ferengi bits in it that I'm very glad we got in. Um, season 11, we're starting to work on now. Contrary to the uh, doomsday theory I heard, we are not ending the game at the end of the Iconium War. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that a rumor that's actually going on? I, I have heard that one. Um, oh my. <laughs> that, that was one of the funniest ones up there with um, the Delta Recruit event. The rumor went around that we were going to delete everyone's characters who were not Delta Recruits. <laughs> I I did yeah. I did hear about that one. I did hear that room that one. <laughs> Oh boy! Was there anything you're working on, uh, like a personal story, or, or anything else coming out for Star Trek? Um, or another we are. Publication? I'm actually. Um, I'm not going to. I have. I just. Uh, I wrote a two-parter for Star Trek magazine with Van Zyl earlier this year. I think the second part comes out soon. Um, the next story in Star Trek magazine will probably not be done by me. I'm going to see. You know, who else wants to take a pass at it? Because cool. I've, I've had a little bit, a little bit of time. Um, I did a story last year for. Or, um, a setting called Last Parsec, which is an RPG done by um, Pinnacle, which is mm-hmm. uh, a, actually a really, really fun sci-fi setting in Savage Worlds, if you're interested oh, yeah. in that kind of thing. Um, but other than that, you know, I mean, the Iconian War has taken up so much brain power. That the, the problem is when you work on a project like this and you're always thinking about the same project, is going home and trying to work on something completely different. You just sort of stare at the screen <laughs> for like 45 minutes and then go watch Netflix. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to shift gears sometimes yeah. when you're so focused on mm-hmm. one task. Yeah. 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 So I have like half a dozen short stories and such that are in various stages of completion. I you know, I need to buckle down possibly after Gen Con this year because I'm I love Gen Con. I always go. Um I think my after Gen Con project this year is going to be trying to finish some of those up and then I'll start shopping them around, see if I call them anywhere. <laughs> um yeah. speaking of conventions, um any chance we can get you at STLV one year? Well, the thing is, like I said, Gen Con's my thing, yes. uh, and they're very, very close in time. Uh, like, sometimes they're even on the same weekend. So, um, Gen Con's in Indiana. I'm from Indiana. It gives me a chance to go home and see oh, my yeah. family and my friends and all of that. So, if there is a point when Las Vegas is not so close to Gen Con that I can't take both of them off, it would be a possibility. But Okay. Yeah. So, the alternative would be possibly to attend the San Francisco convention. No, I have attended the San Francisco well, they're not convention. not doing that one anymore. I heard that that no. was their last one. So I, they're just going to be doing the Vegas one from this point on. Well, I had yeah. heard that they had cut back because they're they're ramping up for the 50th. Yeah, I yeah. know there's currently no no Los, or San Francisco convention mm-hmm. booked this year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. If there was, I'd go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's hope that uh, yeah. for 2016 yeah. that yeah. it comes back. Mm-hmm. It was nice having that local. And of course it was smaller and it, it didn't 
draw as many people, of course, but uh -huh. the, it was nice. It was really friendly and chill and yeah. different vibe from Vegas, or Vegas party. And but uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm ready for Vegas. I've heard you guys party a lot. Oh, like, oh, like it's 1999. Yeah, I, I'm a cup of tea and a book girl. I don't know. <laughs> it's just that there's so many familiar faces, and the familiar faces are very social and friendly yeah. and open. And I sing in Klingon. <laughs> wow, you you and Liam McIntyre, you can do a duet. <laughs> yeah. uh, that that was uh, Kalis in our most recent episode was played by Liam McIntyre, who was also Spartacus in two seasons and um, is Weather Wizard on Flash. Oh, right so, on. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah, and Ramirez was done by David Sobolov, who has done a bunch of cartoon or of animated work, but also did um, most of the Klingon voices in Into Darkness. So. <laughs> Very cool. Uh -huh. Very cool. Yeah. So it was great having an actor who knew how to say kabla. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, uh, thank you very much, Christine, for thank taking the you. time to sit down with us. Uh -huh. um, this has been another GNT show uh, supplemental log yes. live from Crypt Cryptic Studios. Uh -huh. I'm Mike Kapla. 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 Music for the GNT show is provided by Warp Eleven and Drew Allen. Thor and Five Year Mission. This has been a Busy Little Beaver production.